Okay, so here's the plan. Um, today and Wednesday, we'll talk about the second treatise. Um, and Friday and Monday, we'll just have two classes on the third treatise on the aesthetic idea. Um, the syllabus says that Nietzsche papers are due one week from Wednesday on the 11th. I'm willing to push that back. Um, I'll push it back to the following Monday, the 16th. So that's two weeks from today, Nietzsche papers are due. However, uh, in doing that, uh, they have to be in that day. So let's say 12 noon on Monday, the 16th. Uh, so no late papers on Nietzsche. Would you prefer an email or a person? I prefer it to be printed out and put in my mailbox. Um, that way you can see actually what I'm grading instead of sending it by email and hoping that I print it out right and it's formatted properly, that kind of thing. But you can email it to me if you would. Um, so, um, two weeks from today, 12 noon, no late papers, uh, and something else. Um, this, you need to get going on the secondary literature. You need to find some article or chapter or book um, that you get approval from me to use. Uh, and I'm warning you that there's a lot of really bad stuff on Nietzsche. Um, so you really do need to get my approval, and I really might say no. Uh, so really, let's say, Let's say you need to get your proposal to me at the latest one week from today. Okay, so that'll, that'll give you this week and this coming next weekend to look at the secondary literature, get something in, possibly have it rejected, and still have time to find something else. Do you mean that wrong or just inappropriate? Um, I mean bad in every possible way. Uh, inappropriate, mistaken, unscholarly, undisciplined, mm, shallow. You were saying basically like you don't want anything from the postmodernist movement right about Nietzsche, or most of it's not good. You were saying um, you can look at that and you can deal talk about with how it. bad it is, basically. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't mean to say that. Um, you can look at that, and if it's a serious work, that's fine. Um, but there's a lot that just isn't. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Oh, were you going to put up any suggested uh, sources, or? Um, I'm not. You can ask me for something. Uh, you'll need to say something. You'll need to prompt me in some way and say you were interested in his account of guilt, or his account of um, the comparison. You need to say something to me, and then I will try to help. OK, so let me say that one more time. Um, proposals are due to me a week from today. Papers are due two weeks from today. Okay, and one last thing, um, for some reason that I don't understand exactly, um, course evaluations, SURF evaluations, um, they're done through my UAlbany, they're all online, um, but this year they'll only be available between December 12th and 19th, so that's like the week of finals. You should receive an email on December 12th saying that you can now go ahead and um, fill out your course evaluations, probably for all your courses, I'm guessing, um, on December 12th. So that's the end of Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Uh, and please do. OK. So last time, long, long ago, we were talking about the prehistory that created eventually what Nietzsche calls the sovereign individual. 
So this is someone with a long will, he says. This is someone that has a conscience that allows for self-discipline and commitment. So a conscience is a strength or capacity that allows us to maybe stay on track and keep our commitments, keep uh, in view what we have willed, continue to view it as our own, and not be distracted by impulses and desires as they come over us and tempt us to do something that would be maybe more comfortable or more pleasant and distract us from the commitments that we made. So the, um, the process that created this capacity was a long and ugly, brutal process um, that involved lots of pain to fix in us the memory of our commitment. Um, we'll see, uh, I guess the end of this week, that it also involves, or came to involve, the ascetic ideal, the idea of um, self-denial. So for Nietzsche, given human psychology, given the kind of beast that we're dealing with here, um, the way this responsibility came about was uh, through practices that he calls gruesome, repulsive, and cruel. Okay, um, I should say one more thing here, that what he's talking about here is the historical development, the change in individual consciousness that came about over a long historical period. Um, but you might also ask about how each individual comes to be a sovereign individual. So this is a process of individual development and maturity. Uh, and you might think, accurately, that at the individual level, this is a tough process too. So this is the process what, whereby young children come to be sovereign individuals, come to be responsible um, and able to make promises, able to follow through on their commitments. Uh, I think what Nietzsche would say is that every individual, every child, needs some kind of external discipline, external, um, uh, external imposition to develop into someone able to make promises, a, a, a self-disciplined individual. On the other hand, um, we today, in our culture, stand at the end of this very long process um, of developing, you might say, a culture of responsibility that we all benefit from today. So the so today, the development of responsible individuals, the moral uh, maturity of individuals, need not be nearly as brutal as it was thousands of years ago. Um, so the culture that um, we have inherited allows for a less brutal development of conscience in individuals. Okay, um, so I want finally to say again that Nietzsche has nothing but praise for this development. Um, the self-discipline that allows us to make promises and to follow through with them is a great thing. Uh, what we don't yet have, though, is an account of how this relates to morality. We don't yet have an account of how this is related to the moral system of values. 
And that's what he's going to start talking about now. Uh, we're not, however, I just want to flag this, we're not going to finish the story today. So on Wednesday, we'll see the connection between um, the story he's telling here of self-discipline and the capacity to make promises and morality and moral values. So that's going to be the story of the rest of the second essay is connecting these two. Okay, and um, I think at the very end last time, um, I pointed to section four, uh, maybe I just read the first sentence here. It says, but how then did that other gloomy thing, the consciousness, the consciousness of guilt, the entire bad conscience, what we would think of as uh, guilty conscience or guilt, how did this other gloomy thing come into the world? And thus we return to our genealogists of morality. Up to this point here, when we were talking about the sovereign individual, it's not about morality yet. It's a pre-moral system of values. Okay, so uh, um, conscious, consciousness of guilt, or bad conscience, or a guilty conscience, or just guilt, all of these are moralized notions, part of the moral system of values. Um, and these are distinct. Um, these are not the same as the conscience um, of the strong, self-disciplined individual that we've been talking about before. Um, okay, well, so the first, and, and, right, and so where do we get this idea of um, give this moralized idea of guilt from. So now we're going to get a story that traces this moralized value of guilt back into some pre-moral value. Um, and the first place to look is in the etymological connection, he thinks, between the idea of guilt and debt. Uh, in English, you might not notice such a etymological connection, but in German, uh, it's pretty clear. So in German, the word for guilt is schuld, and the word for debts is are debts, plural, are schulden. Um, and the idea here, Nietzsche is suggesting, is that what eventually came to be the idea of guilt, the moralized notion of feeling guilt or being guilty. Uh, originally, in its pre-moral form, was simply the idea of extracting a debt. Um, so this initial pre-moral or non-moral idea of repaying or uh, balancing one's debts becomes moralized it becomes associated with the ideas, this is how it becomes moralized, it becomes associated with the ideas of punishment, of one's intention, the idea of free will, negligence, and guilt. All of these are moralized additions to the original idea. The thought, he says, now so cheap and apparently so natural, so unavoidable, a thought that has even had to serve as an explanation of how the feeling of injustice came into being at all on earth. Namely, uh, the criminal, here's, here's the natural thought that we all have today. The criminal has earned his punishment because he could have acted otherwise. This idea is in fact a sophisticated form of human judging, and inferring, it was attained extremely late 